the Panzerschreck, a big, awkward, but effective weapon used late war by the German army to counter mounting Soviet, British, and American armor. This is a weapon that pops up in a handful of movies, probably most famously in Saving Private Ryan. So let's take a closer look at the Panzer Shrek and some of the movies it's been featured in. <laughs> Panzer Shrek translates to Tank Fright. This was an easy to pronounce name for the Rakuten Panzer Bosch 54, sometimes just called the Ofenrohr or Stovepipe. It was one of the largest infantry anti tank weapons of the war. It was reusable and fired an 88mm rocket. And the first one to try anything moves to a practice six feet underground. The Panzerschreck entered German service in 1943. Germany only gave significant attention to infantry equipped anti tank weapons in the later half of the war. This included weapons like the Panzer Faust and other anti tank devices such as the Panzer Knacker, a magnetic charge requiring a fair amount of courage to use. At the start of World War II, the German army did little to equip infantry to fight tanks. Rather, infantry struggled to keep up with German tanks during the Blitzkrieg. As German tanks were constantly on the offensive in the opening years of World War II, defensive anti-tank weapons received less attention. Infantry before 1943 combated tanks largely with Molotov cocktails, explosives, grenade bundles, and mines. In late 1941, the German army began engaging tanks on a larger scale on the Eastern Front. This led to increased training amongst infantry on anti-tank warfare, including emphasis on Panzerstotrup, or tank destruction teams. Dedicated infantry trained to destroy tanks without the aid of anti-tank guns or German armor. These tank destruction teams along with the greater equipping of all infantry with anti-tank weapons, would be more and more relied on as the war progressed, and Germany went on the defensive against Russian armor. Put it out. Sir! Infantry anti-tank tactics would also be perfected by Finnish troops, defending their wooded and narrow roadways against Russian armor. You can see excellent examples of infantry defending against tanks, in both Finnish movies Tala e Huntala and The Unknown Soldier. Finland received Panzer Shreks from Germany in 1944 to use against their common enemy. Weapons like the Panzer Shrek were effective in terms of value. Casualty rates were high for tank destruction teams, but if they could knock out a tank for the cost of only a few men, it might prove German propaganda, which insisted the fighting spirit of the German soldier could keep pace with Allied tank production. A Panzerschreck only costs 70 Reichsmarks. Oh, what's that? It's, it's a, a bazooka. bazooka. <laughs> All right, get against the wall, Vanderberg, and you, nurse. Okay, so the Panzerschreck isn't a bazooka, but it was inspired by the bazooka. In November of 1942, during the Tunisian campaign, Germany captured an American bazooka. The Panzerschreck would principally copy the design with some tweaks to the electrical firing system. The Panzerschreck also supersized the bazooka to be used with a modified version of the large caliber rockets that had been developed for the Popschen, a wheeled anti-tank system. Now, I think you've got a lot of good information in your book. It's time to show it to the world, don't you think? The Panzerschreck had a good for its time effective firing range of around 150 meters, able to penetrate around 17 centimeters of armor. This penetration value was consistent at any range the weapon could hit its target, as it used a shaped warhead that detonated on contact and wasn't reliant on velocity. The Panzerschreck was highly effective against American Shermans and all but the heaviest Soviet armor. Keep your hands down. The Panzerschreck was also effective against buildings or hardened targets though this would be done taking advantage of the weapon's range. Seeing a Panzerschreck used in close quarter combat, 
such as in Saving Private Ryan, would be an atypical use, but not an impossible use of the weapon. The Panzerschreck did have some drawbacks compared to other anti-tank weapons, like the cheap Panzer Faust. Though the Panzerschreck had excellent armor penetration and good range, the weapon was large, at 164 centimeters or 65 inches. It also weighed 11 kilograms or 24 pounds empty, with the rockets each weighing 1.5 kilograms or 3.3 pounds. The best use of a Panzer Shrek was as an ambush weapon, but even this tactic was not always easily accomplished. For example, it was hard to make use of buildings or bunkers. It could not be fired in confined spaces, such as shown in the French war movie Days of Glory, and this is due to its massive backblast. No! In fact, the heat shield of this weapon was added on due to the extreme heat and backblast given off by the rocket which was dangerous from either end of the tube. Many injuries were suffered by users of this weapon. Early versions had no shield, and users were instructed to wear heavy gloves and even a gas mask. Though the shields made the weapon safer, it hampered visibility and further increased the weapon's weight and awkwardness to carry. Operating this weapon generally required two men, though it could be done with one. Anti-tech weapons were also primarily used in a defensive or ambush role that required either hiding or sneaking into a firing position against a tank, sometimes easier with the smaller Panzer Faust. Firing the Panzer Shrek was also loud, and unlike the American bazooka, the rockets did not fully extinguish before leaving the tube and kept burning for two meters, making them highly visible. A Panzer Shrek team was quick to be identified and a choice target for enemy tanks. Over 300,000 Panzer Shreks would be manufactured by war's end. Along with the Panzerfaust, they were an essential weapon for an army on the defensive, with dwindling tank numbers and limited resources. Panzer Shreks were responsible for knocking out many American and Russian tanks. It was an effective trade. However, it was only a trade that slowed the inevitable. Amazingly, before war's end, a desperate Germany even attempted to make a Panzer Shrek out of a cardboard-like material. Is that paper? Mm, that's what I thought at first too, but it's paper-like. Weapons like the Panzer Shrek and Panzer Faust have greatly influenced anti-tank doctrine to this day, and such weapons have routinely frustrated industrially superior nations, waging offensive wars, for better or worse, throughout the 20th and 21st centuries. Alright, I'm Johnny. Thanks for watching this brief on the Panzer Shrek. As always, feel free to add any knowledge or experience you have on the subject in the comment section, and we'll see you in the next video.